annual performance using a Vanguard advisor. All right, so my man, Mike, Big Mike, new, our next president, Big Mike. Mike writes in, good question though, by the way, Michael. He says, hey, Josh, just getting your opinion on what, if it's a re what is a reasonable return per year using an advisor. Would it be 7%? Do they make moves to be proactive? I get out of bonds before they crashed or just pick some, or do they just pick some funds and go for long-term gains? All right. Let's talk about Vanguard specifically. Vanguard basically has four funds in there. There are going to be a couple other, I think they have short-term bond funds too, but generally four funds is going to be the, the bulk of your portfolio, the vast majority of your portfolio. Domestic uh, stock index, international stock index, domestic bond index, international bond index. And that's it. That's all they're going to have. But again, a couple small ones there. Uh, I think they have a short-term bond fund, but that's it, man. And uh, and they're going to rebalance it every year. That's literally just it. No big deal. And that's a problem that Vanguard has with money management is because you're like, Vanguard's notorious for keeping fees low and not and not market chasing, market timing, or anything like that. That's just the, that's the, that's what makes Vanguard so wonderful. They keep their fees low. They're in there for the long term. They're not going to get out of uh, what do you say? Get out of bonds before they crashed. The the reason is no one knew that was going to happen. Well, the Fed said they're going to raise rates. No one knew what was going to happen there in terms of going from, what, 25 basis points to 5.2 right now or something. I mean, it's insane. And Vanguard models is stay the course, man. Stay the course. You know, what goes up will come down, but it'll go up again, most likely. And I completely agree with that. No big time investment manager, Vanguard, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, Schwab, they're going to get out of, out of just they're not going to fundamentally change the asset allocation and they can't they're fiduciaries they say hey at the end of the day finney here who's uh looking at i don't know what he's looking at out the window but he's very excitable okay he is okay look at those muscles man he's he just ripped i wish i could be that ripped uh, but anyway, so he goes, look at a guy like Finney. He's going to say, Finney, what's your risk tolerance? I'm a 60-40 investor. Okay. 60% international stocks, uh, domestic stocks, 40% uh, international bonds, and, and domestic bonds. Vanguard's issue, in my opinion, is that they're way heavy on international stuff. And at some point, they'll be proven correct. At some point, international will take off relative to domestic. But I, that in of itself, for me, that doesn't bother me. I'm just like, I, I don't want that. I just like it domestic and be done with it. But, you know, at some point, Vanguard will be right. Anyway, so they said, okay, we're going to put you in a 60-40 portfolio. We're going to keep you there until the cows come home because that's what Vanguard believes. Long-term investing. No market timing. No, you know, projecting the future. Because what if they're wrong? So just think about it from a fiduciary-specific standpoint. Let me take that as well. I was standing on the – look at that. What are you looking at, buddy? What was, like, what's going on in that dog's mind? Like, what's he thinking? He's just staring at that. He's just staring. What is he thinking about? Get that squirrel. He's like Charlie Brown with Lucy, you know, uh, with Lucy holding the, the ball. And Charlie Brown's like, I'm going to kick that ball to the moon. And he's like, I'm going to get that damn squirrel. One way or the other, that squirrel is mine. And ironically, he never is. He'll get a frog on occasion, but never a squirrel. Oh, 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 that is... All right, so whew, that was fun. <laughs> what kind of entertainment do you get other than this channel? Man, that is first class entertainment. All right, so Vanguard isn't going to, they're just, they, they can't say, Mike, you're a 60 40 portfolio, but we think bonds are going to crash. So we're going to put that 40% into cash. They can't do that. I just, I mean, because that's not the fiduciary. The fiduciary says we have to keep you allocated the way your risk portfolio, your risk tolerance is. Because what if they're wrong, man? What if they put you in cash and it turns out the bonds freaking took off like a bat out of hell? You're going to be pissed and you'll probably sue them and you'd win. You'd say, hey, you're supposed to give me the most money for my investments. You were supposed to keep me allocated. They're just not going to do that. Um, and on top of that part two of this, it's not just Vanguard. It's any real asset manager. There's no, They don't get paid for cash. I always remember that, guys. Investment man, I was talking to a guy um, two days ago. He emailed me. He's with Fisher. I got no call with Fisher. I and mean, Fisher's just all day. I, I don't think they do any bonds, frankly. I don't know. It might be wrong. But, you know, they don't have any. They don't pull punches. So this is our portfolio. We're going with it. 
Anyway, he needs more cash. You know what I'm saying? Because I said, look, dude, at the end of the day, you're pretty heavy in stocks. You're about to retire. We need more cash. So he contacted Fisher. He wanted, um, you know, I, I, again, I go four years cash, man, literally cash, especially now with the money, money market is what I'm talking about. You get 5%. And I said, dude, absolutely. He said, well, Fisher says you don't need more than two years max. That's max. And even that, blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, I get it. And they don't get paid for having that cash. They just don't. And so a lot of money managers don't like people being in cash. They don't sell you certificates of deposits. You'll notice they don't like you being in money market. It just the cash is, is a dead asset to them. But a cash is not a dead asset to you. That, see, that's the thing that drives me crazy. Cash is trash or cash is you know junk. It's just not. Cash is a real live asset that has a real live value. You're never going to outperform stocks in the long run, uh, you know, historically speaking. You shouldn't expect it, but cash is actually a value. It's an asset. But the problem is cash, people don't get paid on cash. They really look down on that as if you're a freaking, oh, you must be a wimp if you don't want cash. I, man, call me wimp all day long. I don't care. Cash is king, especially for a recent or about to retire for sure. So I would not expect Vanguard to give you 7% a year. And the reason I wouldn't expect that because Vanguard doesn't expect that themselves, Mike. Vanguard expects, you know, you know basically four and a half to 5%. And that's before the fees. Factor in the fees. It's only 35 basis points. So you look at between four and four and a half to you know, basically four to five percent net of fees. I think that's what you should expect. And, uh, and I'm very comfortable with that. That's what I use in my own right capital software. About you know, four to six, depending on how aggressive you're going to be, because I follow the Vanguard models. Anyway, hope that helps. You know, if you don't have these expectations, I, I had a client, I'll never forget this when I was at USA, and she wasn't what happens at USA is you get assigned a bunch of people, you know what I'm saying? And um because people are always moving over here, moving there, quitting. It just you just anyway. So she was one of my signees. You know, you're supposed to develop clients, which I did. You know, doing seminars all over the place. But you also get assigned clients when other people leave or something like that. And I'll never forget this one lady. She was a finance professor, and she was in Bulgaria or something like that. I can't remember some Eastern European place. And she was an American, but she was stationed over there as a, a professor. For, I can't remember what the hell she was doing. And uh, and this is in 2000. Camera is 2011 or 13. Is we had a mark is was it 2013? I think it was 2011. If memory was it 2011? I can't remember. In the summer of either 2011 or maybe it was 13, from Jan from J uh, July through August, but it was like a 45 day period in there where the markets fell like 20 percent or something like that. I can't remember the exact time. I'll never forget this. And she was pissed. She goes, "Why did USA move me out of the markets?" I said. And first of all, I said, sister, you, you, we never said we we're going to do that. Never, ever. You know, we never said we we're going to move you out to protect you from the market decline. That does, no one does that. Secondly, I said, you're a finance professor. You know you can't time the market. Come on, man. What is this? I couldn't believe it. She was mad. I said, look, I said, let's just cancel your account. I'll let you manage. She goes, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. I said, well, that's the thing. I'm just telling you right. And she was not happy with me. I said, I don't, I'm not pulling punches here. We're never going to time the market. Because we can't, because we know that market timing is a is a facade. It doesn't work. It might work on occasion just by luck, but you can't because you just don't know. So right now it's 11, uh, 10 o'clock or something like that, 10, 10 o'clock on a.m. The market just opened a half hour ago. What's the market going to end up today? Do you know? You can guess. That's it, man. We have no clue. None. But the long-term ramifications of higher interest rates of inflation, this means what? What does it mean exactly? The market has a continual steady path to the northeast going up. And on occasion, it goes down. On occasion, it goes down. It's upwardly biased. The stock market is, and this is what I talk about in my investment course. The bond market is flat. Stock market is upwardly biased. It's called a fixed income for a reason. It's literally fixed. The bonds are fixed. You're not making any more than that. Stocks have unlimited to the moon. Stocks have limited downside all the way down to zero. That's it. And then the moon is unlimited. You know what I'm saying? But bonds, we know it's fixed. But that's all there is to it. There's no upside other than what you're you're getting on your coupon. That's it. And then, of course, your current yield is really what you're going to be looking at. And that's relative to the price of the bond that you buy. I don't want to get in that right here. But be that as it may, I'll never forget. It's like, I, I guess if you know what happens, we, we don't market time. No one can win market time, sister. I've, I'll never forget that. She was like, eh. And I remember I emailed her a bunch of times, too, during the market volatility. I said, and she never responded back to me. And I was just like, are you okay? Uh, and then when she called in, Matt, I said, sister, I emailed you a thousand times, dude. I didn't want to hear it. I just, uh, she's like, you're supposed to protect me. I said, no, no one would ever say that. Anyway, so Vanguard won't do that either.
All right, Mike, hope this helps with your question. God bless, and we'll see you. Love your thoughts.